Okay, so we're looking at the radio. The three things that we want to look at is we want to verify that the frequency is the same as listed on our dial frequency. Again, this is 7.102.20, so that's correct. Uh, the second thing we want to look at is our power. So we'll click on the power button, come over here and look at our power. 30 watts is fine uh, for Pactor. Uh, if I was calling anywhere uh, this side of the Mississippi on the East Coast uh, side, which is where I'm located, 30 watts will hit that. If I were calling out to uh, California maybe, um, then I might go up to 45 or 50. Uh, but 30, 35 is a good setting to use for most everything that you do. Uh, again, we make a change uh, on a multi-knob if we needed to do that. I will leave it at 30 to come out of power. Uh, the last thing we want to check is we actually want to listen to the station, listen to the frequency. And primarily we want to make sure that there's nothing on it. Uh, you will be able to tell if there is a packet session going on because you will hear the buzzing going on. Uh, so it's just one way to tell. Uh, the other way to tell is actually looking at um, the uh, channel free or channel busy indicator uh, that's on your uh, pack door session window. And you'll see that in a second. Uh, but basically you just want to listen to make sure the frequency is not in use. Okay, so now that we've confirmed the radio is ready to go, uh, it's as easy as coming up here and hitting start. Uh, you notice it'll go out and start calling the station. It's made contact. Notice up here that it has it in P3 mode, and it also gives me the current bit rate that it's using. The higher this number is, the better. 1400 is a good connection. It can go up to 28 or higher. It shows you the in and out, how much it's tuned it. And right here, it's also showing if it's uh, automatic request is uh, for repeating things. I wanted to show you what the uh, pack door unit looks like when it's actually in use. Um, it's kind of fun to watch all the lights that light up on this. Basically, the more green, the better, but it does show you what mode you're connected to and the station that it's connected to. Uh, you can notice that as it tunes in the station, it will move until that comes with a green center frequency. Uh, so the unit's actually tuning up the radio uh, to get to the exact frequency to get the best, best transmission. Uh, so you can see here we made the connection, uh, went through, checked my mail. Uh, pack door is pretty quick. It uh, happens pretty quick and can go through and do that. Uh, so you can see that it's connected uh, to KC4TVO. Uh, he has an RMS tri-mode unit. Uh, he also has a contact information. It's interesting to read a lot of times here at the very top. You'll have uh, information that the stations want to give out to you. Uh, it tells me that I have uh, over 1,400 minutes remaining for this day with this station. Uh, and then it goes through. It's connected to the San Diego CMS. And uh, looked for my mail. Again, told it what kind of unit I have. And looked for my mail. Gave it my grid square. Didn't have any. So it said goodbye with an FQ and disconnected. Uh, so that was our connection. It's really pretty straightforward. Uh, the, you can come up. The other choices you've got here is best channel. Uh, basically, when you hit best channel, it's going to take the, whatever's the top of this list, which happens to be the one that we chose, and uh, put that in there. And then as you click it again and again, it'll work its way down uh, through the list, uh, 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 bringing these up. Uh, so you can hit next channel from that. Uh, the other choices here would be stop and abort. Abort immediately stops whatever's happened. You really don't ever want to do that. Uh, and uh, you really don't want to use stop unless you really need to. Uh, whenever the session starts, just let it complete on its own. It will, if it can't connect to the station, it's going to time out on its own. Uh, sometimes if you abort out of a session or stop a session, uh, the stop will actually go out to the station and try to tell it you're stopping and uh, let it know that uh, you just didn't disappear. If you hit a board, a lot of time this, the FAR station just keeps trying to contact you because it just assumes it's a uh, interference uh, uh, with propagation or something. And it can mess up some of those gateways. So don't abort out of a session. 
uh, if you can avoid it. Uh, so you'll notice when the session's over, it comes back up, start is bold again, and I can connect again by just doing that. Uh, what I would recommend that you do is as you make connections, every time you make a good connection, come down here and add that to your favorites. Uh, this is a, your favorites drop down, and you can notice that I've done quite a bit of uh, connecting and found out which stations uh, that I can connect to, uh, NOIA in Florida, uh, VE1YZ in Nova Scotia. Uh, these are just stations that I connect to and have good connections. The number that's beside this is the current uh, propagation reading. Uh, so again, I could look at the uh, NOIA and see that uh, on uh, 40 meters, I've got a pretty good chance of connecting to them, but on 80 meters, you know, pretty much can forget it. Uh, so those, that's what this number in parentheses is all about in the end. And again, that helps you make a wise uh, decision. Uh, one way you can go if you've got multiple bands to choose from is just go and open that band. When you select it, uh, you can turn up the volume and just listen. And a lot of times you can hear the packet stations calling, uh, or you'll get a busy channel indicator that you can see right here. Uh, if you do get a busy channel indicator, uh, basically the system is hearing another call going on and will uh, stop you from automatically starting yours. When you hit start, it will come up with a box and say, channel's busy, do you really want to proceed? And then you can say yes or no. Uh, so it's kind of handy. Uh, otherwise, it will show you that the channel's free. But you can uh, actually listen to the channel uh, and uh, get quite a bit of information that way to kind of tell what's going on. Uh, so there you go. That's how we make a uh, pack door connection. And uh, we'll just hit exit and exit out of that. Okay, the next thing we're going to look at is win more. So we'll come over to our open session and we're going to choose win more. This, this will be using the signal link USB as our interface. So we'll click on win more and we're going to open session. Uh, when we open session the first time, uh, we're going to get the NAG box. We've talked about the NAG box earlier. Uh, this is just a registration reminder, and to bypass it, all you have to do is hit Remind Me. Uh, if you ever do want to make a donation uh, to the Amateur Radio Safety Foundation, they'll give you a key you can place in here, and this box won't come up. Uh, for practical purposes, hit Remind Me Later, and it'll disappear. So we have our session box in our Winmore sound card interface. It has a nice waterfall in here so we can see the signals. The main thing is that we have our receive audio level. And you notice it's green right here in the green segment. That's perfect. That's right where we'd like for it to be. Uh, we'll come up to our uh, session box that we're familiar with, and we're going to go to setup. So we'll click on setup. There are two things that we want to set up. The Winmore TNC setup. Uh, is the first one, so let's click on that. Uh, this is where we choose the signal link card. Uh, the main thing to know is that it will always show up as a USB audio codec. Uh, I've renamed mine in, that with the actual signal link name, uh, but oftentimes they'll come up as microphone and speaker or whatever. Uh, but just look for USB audio codec. That's the signal link. Uh, so just make sure you choose that for both uh, the capture and playback device. You can leave all of the rest of this the same. Uh, make sure that our uh, in, inbound session bandwidth is set to 1600 uh, for a maximum and uh, the drive level this is the drive level going out uh, for transmit this is one place that you can adjust uh, the power uh, going out uh, the level going out uh, to the signal link uh, but anyway so when you get it the way you want make sure the uh, Morse code ID is checked click update uh, it will go out and uh, reset everything, uh, and uh, your NAG box will come back up again. Uh, again, we'll just uh, remind me later. And then the next thing we want to do is go back to setup, and we're going to go to the radio setup. Now, we talked about this separate serial cable to run when you're running signal link uh, earlier when we talked about cabling configurations in that particular video. Uh, this optional serial cable, if you add it from your computer directly to the back of your radio, uh, in this case, Kenwood TS2000 serial port, uh, you can come in here and set this up to where 
uh, the software will change your channels uh, just like the pack tour unit does uh, so we're going to have a lot of the same settings we're going to come in here and click on uh, Kenwood amateur uh, for our particular Kenwood we're going to be using upper sideband leave all of the rest of these blank and the antenna set for default uh, then we'll come over to our, our COM port uh, that we're using for that cable. Again, only the ones that are available here. If you're not sure which, try one and see if it works. Uh, you'll eventually click on the correct one. In this case, it's COM11 for us. Uh, make sure the bot is set to 9600. Uh, this is the menu setting uh, in the Kenwood uh, for serial communications, and we set that to 9600. Uh, check both the uh, RTS and the DTR uh, boxes, and then you'll just have your PP port optional set to external so once all that's set like that hit update and you can hear the radio beep uh, and it'll actually change channels if the radio is not changing channels and beeping then something's not set correctly uh, but now uh, the radio is actually being controlled uh, so now uh, we can go out and look at uh, stations we want to talk to uh, communicate with so we're going to go to uh, channel selection uh, beside this is switch to peer-to-peer -peer. Uh, the sessions always default to a windling type session if you wanted to switch to a peer-to-peer -peer type connection you could click on this box and it would change over to that uh, setup so just be aware of that normally we're going to go to channel selection and uh, click on uh, that uh, setting and this box will come up where we can select the, the best stations to um, look at and again you're familiar with this our quality path estimates the higher the number the better and in this particular case we're going to choose a KN6 KB uh, and you can see the uh, numbers for that uh, it's basically uh, 571 miles away at a bearing of 160 from our location uh, so we'll highlight that hit select uh, it will fill that information in here and uh, basically we can look down at the waterfall and uh, see that we do have a uh, transmission going on near us uh, but it's not actually dead center so it's probably not that station um, so now we're going to go to the radio and do our typical things that we do to get ready, uh, which is to confirm uh, the dial frequency is set to the correct thing. Uh, we're going to tune up the antenna tuner by hitting the AT button and holding it down on the Kenwood, and that uh, engages the auto tuner, and it'll tune it up. And then we're going to go to our power setting, uh, confirm that it's set for 30 watts, and uh, then we're going to actually listen on the frequency and we can hear what's going on on the station uh, so you can see right now we have a, a station that's transmitting uh, to this particular station and it is busy uh, so we're going to wait just a minute for this to clear uh, we'll come back here when it clears and make a transmission so uh, be back in a moment one of the handy things I want to show you is on the WinLink website if you go to the website winlink.org and go to tools and click on tools you go to the RMS live system information page this is the RMS map that shows all of the current stations that are available and it's for both packet, packdoor, windmore and robust and it does it by service code also if you come down to the bottom of the page you'll see uh, what the legend indicates that the H for the stations that those are the hybrid stations all of the green stations are current uh, yellow have we not reported in the last since the last two hours and red have not reported um, in four hours uh, so this shows you what's going on around the country in terms of uh, valid stations to use so if I click on Pactor, we'll look at some of those stations real quick. Of course, the one I've talked to you about before, VE1YZ. If you click on the station, it'll show, it gives you the information basically about the station and uh, what Pactor modes that it'll work. Uh, if you come over here, we'll look at one more, my friend Mike's station. Uh, that's a VA3LKI. And again, you can look and see uh, on all the different frequencies, uh, what specific frequencies on which bands he has available. Uh, so again, again, it's a great way to be able to kind of find out uh, uh, more about the particular stations and where they're located at. If all you have is the call sign, if you come over here to the side where on the select and do the drop down, uh, you can actually slide down and uh, find a particular station. Uh, so if you click on a particular station, uh, it will take you uh, to that area and you can actually see uh, where it's located here. Uh, so uh, I just want to show you that so you become familiar with it. It would make your life a little bit easier when you're trying to figure out where stations are around the country and ones that you can try out uh, to hit.
Uh, again, that's all available at the WinLink uh, website, uh, winlink.org.